Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking more politics. Trump impeached again. What can I say? I just did a political rant type podcast about the Capitol being stormed. So this is right afterwards. I'm not sure how I put these out, you know, when I'm publishing them on YouTube and uh, Anchor for my uh, audio. But this is, again, what crazy times. President Trump has been impeached again. It's the first time ever in history. Oh, boy. Now, just for clarity, I've never liked Trump. I've always tried to be open-minded, so I'll give him the benefit of being good or bad. But, but there's an argument before I get to some of these points and uh, about the actual next steps is why the crying or the whining from both sides in, in a way? I understand the need to be careful with censorship. I under need. I mean, I understand the needs for. Um, maybe even a, a an Overwatch type uh, committee or program. Okay, you want to watch these high tech companies, the power they uh, get. You want to play the argument with private organizations and what they can do. Aside from that, Trump's a douchebag. So I am finding it hard to even with analyzing some of my biases. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm 49 years old, and I know of Trump since my teenage years. There's no amount of bias, no amount of justifying, looking at his history as a businessman and now as a politician, that he could sit there and say, oh, I'm not to be judged or treat me fairly. It's been four years of, um, you know rigging the system against them. Well, if you were not a douchebag, if everything wasn't a fucking lie, bragging about the lies also, behaving like a fucking idiot and a moron, I don't understand this thing. I think I saw something from Sam Harris that was pretty interesting, and it said something to the effect of, I could be okay with um, not being for censorship, but I could still want to censor a psychopath. Meaning, I'm not here rooting for the cancel culture and um, for certain people's beliefs just to shut them down and lock them out. But there is a reason you can't yell fire in a movie theater. There's no fire. I mean, there are limits to certain things. This guy is just... Oh, I don't know. It's... It's mind-boggling, the blinders people put on. But I'll grant it, he did some good, whatever, as a president, you're done now. And it became a desperate thing that just looked bad, it felt bad, it's... And yeah, okay, so, I think he's a douchebag, I don't like him as a person, as a human. And it's evident in everything he does, so, I don't buy this, oh, and some of the, you know, Jimmy Dore type fucking... Um, arguments are ridiculous because these are the same arguments for a different topic he would rail against and he would make fun of. Because you know it's disingenuous. It's There is no fucking big argument about, oh, he's getting censored and people pull him, at all, pull him off things and I don't see violence and stuff. Stop equating these things. It's just fucking bullshit. So that's my feelings on just the general sense of this all. He made his bed, he's got to lay in it. He's been a, a scumbag from the beginning. I don't give a fuck about respecting the presidential office or um, some ideology in that sense. I just want to tackle issues if that's what I want to be into politics for. Like, what do I want to do about Flint's water? And how does my president stand on that? Or my senator or the governor? And climate change, or whatever I, I might be passionate about, something I believe strongly in, and that's where I go, so 
I don't look at this and say, you know what, Republicans, blah, 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 left wing, right wing. It's just, you know, this is going to be human nature for a while. It will creep out. You'll get some fucking clown like Trump. Maybe the next one will be worse. But really, when you look at it, it's just gerrymandering, this electoral college nonsense that keeps Republicans in power for the most part. So I don't know if that'll last long. And when I see it as two heads of the same snake, it doesn't really, you know, um, register me as a real uh, heartfelt motion to impeach him again. But now I'll get into that. And it really has to do with... They hold the majority, the Democrats now, in both um, branches, so they impeached him. So as of this recording, like I said, I'm not sure when I'm putting it up, but he is impeached again. Now it'll go to the next phase. Um, we got to face a trial and potential punishment, I guess. So just like they did with the first one, you had lots of articles you could have written up. That would have buried him and shown what a creep he is. But you might have shown what a creep the Democrats are too. But you weren't willing to do that. Because there is some truth to what some Republicans were saying at the time about certain investigations. I don't really give a fuck. If it was up to me, Hillary would be in jail. Um, that fucking cunt that worked for her. Who robbed Bernie, you know. That got, he got in trouble for it. But just a slap on the wrist. It's just... Nonsense. I don't care. This is a another article of impeachment that they put up about inciting this, um, you know, uh, capital, the storm in the capital. But where are the the phone call? You're looking at um, several things he's done that were desperate, that were really criminal. And you did this before. It's like you're doing it again. Do you really want to impeach him? And what will that look like? You've got the majority now, but you would need, I don't know, if you went even 50-50, you get, you need 67 votes or something like that when you look at the numbers. So can they pull it off? Will there be some Republicans because of this? I mean, I, I get it if you don't want him coming back. So let's say the Democrats' motive is, we want to make these things as punishment will be all the stuff that you hear about um your pension taken away um certain money for traveling can't run for office again some of these things have precedent in some capacity and officials and it's just um you know it's almost like a focus madness and i can see where each side sees this uh desperate act but can you get enough Republicans now to say, um, you know what, I don't want Trump back in politics. Uh, you got all these assholes who have said the worst fucking things about Trump before he got became nominated the first time. I mean, exposing who he really is, and then as soon as he won the nomination, he was president, they all shut up and, you know, they fucking kowtow. It's just ridiculous, and they double down on their stupidity. Will they change? Will they say, you know what? Let's do this and maybe we can make some deal because I don't trust fucking Biden for shit. Or Kamala Harris, I don't give a fuck. They've got to earn my trust as far as I'm concerned. They're just, uh, you know, uh, prettier looking criminals who have done a lot of harm to this country in their own right, especially Biden. And some of my thinkings is Trump was a businessman and he did damage and he did damage as a president, fine. But are you really going to compare it to Biden being in politics for so many years? If he changes my mind, I'll try to be honest about it and give them give him praise or whatever. So you have to have like 67 and that ratio could change with who shows up because I think it's a majority of who's on the call or some bullshit. I'm not a fucking analyst. I just get these, um, you know, impulses to speak my mind on these things. As someone who's just from Brooklyn, New York, you know, scrambling to pay my rent every month, um, worrying about people close to me, loved ones, doing okay. Like, there's been 
couple close calls, but nothing I'm going to, um, I have to further worry about in that sense, but I want to play superhero RPG and Dungeons and Dragons and write my scripts and my books and uh, all the ideas I have and my crazy passions and uh, wild uh, ideas for cartoons and whatever. I, I, my my interest is in, oh, go do politics to get like hits on my site or um, it's just not working like that for me. It's just a realization that I have to at least once in a while touch base with politics and see what's going on. Like this nonsense. This is all bullshit. And yes, it was building up. You can't treat these people with kid gloves. So is this something you want to set a precedent for and say, we're going to go through with this. We're just doing it again. We want to make sure if another president tries this, well, either side, right? Because, you know, the Republicans ever get in power, they'll use it. The one is even threatening now to bring up things uh, Biden to be impeached. This is, it's, this is madness. Uh, but it's... It, it plays so much on how ideas are put into people, how it spreads, uh, studies on large group of people, their thinking patterns, and how choices get narrowed down. It's complicated and nuanced, and there's a rift in the country, so to speak. I think it's always been there for the most part, and it gets amplified by these, you know, braggadocious, big, you know, winded fucking blowhards who stoke up the fires and get people's base uh, emotions going and lie constantly. So I'm a little bit on the fence here. I'm like, all right, enough with this charade, all this bullshit. There's a part of me that understands to set a precedent, impeach them again. Now he's a second. That doesn't go away. But now he'll face a trial. They'll get their lawyers. And um, this will take weeks, right? It won't be a day or two. So that's another thing. You fucking the papers have to be sent out to justices and what other fucking you're going to um, deal with. And who knows? But I'm curious if they're going to keep like. Uh, did they miss their opportunity to add articles like the phone call, which is another thing that's bizarre? Uh, a little side note. Um, What was it? January 2nd or something like that. He's on the phone for an hour. Um. With President Trump, with the Secretary of State of Georgia, it's just he had urged him to overturn the results, and this is ridiculous. You can't. I could see the you, the point where you can't let people get away with certain things, and it's not a targeted thing. Where, um, all right, let's let's pick a president I don't like, Obama, a sellout, corporate shill. But it was ridiculous that they went after his birth certificate for his whole term, both term, both terms, and from this fucking clown, Trump. Now that's unfair. And I don't know how the cancel culture was back then. Would they have gone after? Obviously not. You can say whatever the fuck you want. But it's not a normal thing. This is not a normal, oh, this is a um, person who has a tough job and damn it, he uh, did it his way, and he's gruff, and no, you know, I think that's just the illusion of Trump is just a shitty human, uh, vile, in, in a sense, and it just permeates everything he does, he's never been able to hide it except for the blind faith he gets from his fucking followers, this cult-like bullshit. I give no fucks. I think he gives no shits about religion and God. No, that's a fucking joke to him. It's true what he said about he would run as a Republican because they're, they're stupid. And that's Trump's words. And you know, he wouldn't be able to get away with certain things. So, to, you know, what are we going to get here? Enough Republicans to really, really send home the message that this will not be tolerated. We won't let some... Uh, what is he called? It calls him a riverboat captain. <laughs> Fucking clown reality star. Capture the presidency again. And if you do, you better fucking at least behave, I guess. I mean, I don't know. You know, the things he did were uh, downright criminal. And without a doubt, in some sense, 
Yes, there were things overblown. Yes, he was hounded constantly. But when you're a douchebag who lies all the time and you just create, you like these fires of nonsense and you just point fingers at everybody and never accept the blame and you were a disaster during this pandemic, which I don't want to give people uh, the impression that this is uh, something that presidents always deal with, pandemics and stuff. So, okay, I wouldn't give it as uh, uh, an overall... Um, failure in that sense, but it's not a good thing. He didn't handle it well. So this, oh, we're going to impeach him on this incitement to riot. You know, okay, they're going to play word games and what it means to do this and that. What was the intention? But you got people giving senators uh, locations away. You have tours being put out. So there are already conspiracies on both sides. Is it fucking Antifa? Is it fucking um, QAnon? Um, it's just fucking stupid. There are new documents being found about plans to kill people and, you know, pipe bombs being found. And it just, it just becomes a mess and people died, right? You're not going to get around that, you know, especially since, uh, Capitol Police were killed or something like that, injured. You have people talking about, um... Lots of things they've seen, which have been leaking here and there, like police opening things and waving them in. I mean, you know, this is what happens when groups get together, large groups, and you aren't prepared for it. So that blame, I think, goes a little bit both ways. But no, it's terrorists fucking thought they would prove to the government that they could threaten them, in a sense. And that's how I see it. I have not seen the evidence that tells me it was an unlawful election and... Trump's insistence on that is to blame for this. Plain and simple. However, we have an impeachment trial, and this will be part two, I guess, because I did part one already. I did like a three, I don't know, I maybe connected three things, you know, talking about the procedures as they happened, because it was like, you know, my lifetime, oh, yeah, I, I was tiny, I don't remember, you know, Nixon or whatever. I mean, he wasn't born, so, born in 71. This is... Um, at a time where I try to go in cycles and at least dip my foot into politics, get an idea of what's going on. I don't want to be blindsided by shit. Uh, I told, I said this before, but I've always had this thing about me where, you know, once a year, two weeks before certain, uh, regional elections and presidential, I'd hunker down and just see what interests me and, and who. And now I'm trying to change that. So you'll get these fucking podcasts. They're ridiculous. I don't know where I sit on this. If I was a Senate member, if I have privy to certain information, I would lean towards yes. So let's say everything that's been stated now, uh, if verified, and um, I would like to have the phone call included in the article. See, that's another thing. So I don't know how... I'm not a politician. I don't know. But... I understand it from both sides, like it's enough is enough, but does he deserve it? And part of me says yes, a big part of me says yes, and granted that'll be choked up to bias, fine, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm admitting that, I try my best to work on things, but this is where we stand now. President Trump has been impeached for the second time, the first time ever in our history, and it will be going to the second phase, which is the trial. Lawyers have to put papers together. And we'll see probably more um, disturbances here and there. I don't think it'll be as bad. But some of these responses and all these things that are coming out are not making it look good. So I'm leaning towards that Trump does deserve this in the end. If that means the end of this podcast gives any fucking weight to this, who the fuck knows? It's craziness stay healthy everybody stay safe be informed if you can but take things from a neutral position and analyze it from as many angles as you can and always question your beliefs i'll talk to everybody next time be well